Kia ora, Sean. Kia ora, Jack. Great to see you at your whare. Yeah, thank what you. What a beautiful day. And, um, you know, we're at a wonderful point in your process. So what are some of the sort of highlights that you've had bring us up to date with where you are? It's, um, it keeps getting realer and realer. I feel like from the outset, it was always, it's always been a bit of a thing where I'm trying to find the stories and of the people and just trying to see what that is. I have to try not to drink too much coffee. Because the other day, because like, I spent all day, because the story has got so many facets, all the different individual, like five, six individual stories, then trying to make it all together. This whole process is about going with the flow and I have to keep going with that and eventually it will come this uh, to this. As a choreographer, you're, you are um, having to hold so many spaces. I think that what's beautiful to observe is um, everyone is so hooked into your vision, you know, like from Te Oriho, who is a cousin of yours, who's working on the um, on the kākahu, on the costumes mm. and how that shapes together to long-term friends that you've had in the industry, David Long, who's making your music, um, working with John Wright again on another iteration of this unfolding realm. I think there's a lot of generosity. Are you seeing the vision that you always, you might have had do you think that everyone's kind of like in the realm or close to the realm of what you've been imagining all this time? It is a collaboration, firstly with all the dancers and performers, and then that's also a, a role of a choreographer or director is articulating your vision to your performers, giving them enough information that they can play with that and they know kind of where they're going. I'm just feeling my way through. I've got all these stories and I'm searching for the new story or a broader story that will hopefully develop from all these stories. I've been enjoying watching you um, develop work and share it at the end of every week and we see little snippets of ideas and characters coming through and it could be very simple ideas, in fact quite small um, facets and they all seem to be as important as each other, you know, like that's what I love about how you're working. What intrigues you about sort of looking at things and why, what makes something feel like, yep, yeah, that's the right thing to put there, or, yeah, how do you prioritise your ideas about what, what needs to be there or what doesn't? I like having things that aren't necessarily go together being put together. It may not necessarily be linear, but there's still, uh, in my head, my narrative and my logical sequence of events. And so, really, it may only be this scene that it can go with. In the showings, you, sh you see these snippets and there's a real essence there. So it's also trying to keep that essence within a new picture as well. It's very much about them. I want to bring them to the fore. I wanted to think about um, tikanga. And the reason being is because patu has been a big part of the work. Mm. And um, we've had a lot of thinking about patu and how we might approach that in a way that uplifts and upholds the mana and integrity of that, that taonga. Um, but also enables you and the dancers to have access to be able to um, be part of the vision that you're building. Mm. I was born Māori, my mother is Māori, my father is Pākehā Australian, but I grew up in Auckland, central Auckland, um, used to go to Waimarama for my holidays, see my grand, but I was never immersed in, in te ao Māori and it's always been a thing. And yeah, definitely the last couple of years I've, I've, I'm embracing it more and about connection, this is part of me finding my connection to Waimarama and also my not connection with my Waimarama, my connection with Māori and my disconnection from Māori and what all, all that is. So part of this, the kaupapa of this work are the stories uh, from Waimarama of my whakapapa, of three, four very strong wahine both myth and real. And, and one of those is uh, for one, for Hokyo, she is an awa and she is a wahine toa fighter who used to fight with patu. So patu is in the work and I don't know much about patu. I don't know much about weapons and the history of that. And I knew that if I wanted to have anything like that in the work, Especially, I think, with, with taonga and what they represent, it had to be done in uh, the right way. It sounds like you've got a lot going on in your head, your mind, your thoughts, your creativity, as most creatives do. 
um, but you've managed to manifest a really gentle and beautiful ebb and flow that makes the space safe and open to lots of dialogue, like to watch your work unfold, I think is very much what it is to be present in this moment. So really that's just a mihi to you and, and you as a person and the work that you're creating. Yeah, I, 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 like, I, I, I like to have, try and create a good environment. You say that it's, it's, it's so calm and in my head I'm like, stress and like that whole dichotomy of working with people and taking in what they uh, would like to share and collaborate and, and then me looking at the clock and um, over worrying about things. A lot of what I do is trained, it's a lot of layers working with so many people but also it's just sort of innate and I don't know how to always articulate that and that's the hard thing of then being able to articulate that and to tell, to share that with performers to bring that vision out. So to be able to have, enable people to come into a space and just sit and relax and just hopefully get some enjoyment. I've, I've really enjoyed watching you as a choreographer work with the modi of each performer. I would definitely say they are so in their bodies when they perform and there's no lack of thought or no lack of consciousness about what each part means or is. And I think that's because of really clear and precise articulation that you've actually managed to um, hand create. Every part of Nawai has Sean's special imprint. It feels like that's the element that keeps everything kind of becoming. And so it's really like truly art that is created from that perspective, I think, where it is in the eye of the beholder. I'm so glad that we're at the point that we're at. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to the next weeks and, you know, we're all well aware that all creativity goes through that deep <coughs> process and um, you know it's been really awesome that you've held the space in such a strong way but you've also allowed your vulnerability to be very transparent and I really want to acknowledge you as a tāne and especially as a choreographer for showing a new way you know how to be vulnerable how to be real but also how to lead so ngā mihi e hoa. Moto mahi atahua. Ngam hi Jack, ngam hi Jack um, for your corridor uh, and your words. I liked what you said about keeping Modi moving. And then if you do it right, you can have what's happening on stage, the Modi living. So it's a living thing right at that moment. Yes, it's all worked out and thing, but if it's done right and everyone has the right information and tools and if they're in, in that space, it can live. And that's the great thing about live performance, it's happening right there in front of you for an audience. And I hope all the performers get to live that as well. Yeah, so yeah, ngamahi Jack for, uh, for all of this. And um, yeah, kia ora.